Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to cover today, and apart from our star, it's all found between the mantle and Mars. With the arrival of the coronal hole stream, we've seen a break from larger quakes, but that may be short-lived. So let's get over to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star begin with the filament release top left that we saw yesterday, and then pulling eyes towards center crosses the next coronal hole with thin dark plasma filaments at the north and south walls. Brightest region doesn't actually have any sunspots as it is a blank disk, which explains the flat-lined solar flare charts. The filament north of the coronal hole is expansive and reaches back north across towards the far side, but the southern one is compact, sort of in a C-shape tilted to the side, and is wholly facing Earth today and most of tomorrow. Solar wind here, and there is the rise and fall of solar wind speed from the now-departed coronal hole. The geomagnetic storm was short-lived, but... Once again, as we see Amsterdam airspace virtually shut down, there has not been such a hub-wide or in some cases regional or national airspace shutdowns outside of the times of those geomagnetic events since at least the 1990s. Next space weather afoot is from the next coronal hole stream unless one of the filaments ejects. With the storms over now and the next opening about to face Earth, we'll be seeing the reprieve from seismicity at a likely end tonight. Let's go to our stories, and there is a very cool Boloid explosion simulation and corresponding information page detailing a public model for aerodynamical computation, and in this case, some fun facts about the meteorites themselves. Again, this is for an intruding object that doesn't impact the ground, and we're viewing mock contours and temperature profiles. Up next, a very cool study likely to be relevant to the student workshop at the conference as scientists have been studying landslides on Mars. These two scientists are a bit obsessed in the best way possible, and their modeling shows that unless ice underground is lubricating the action, there is no realistic means of landslide observations being what they are. The case for subsurface water mass strengthens. Folks, what happens when all of the Earth science fleet gets put onto one animation? It gets very difficult to see everything, and I haven't helped that by speeding up the video, but the whole thing is 90 seconds long, and we just don't have time for that. So check it out on your own if you must, especially if you watch one of those channels who seem to be confusing their viewers by mixing up where the SDO is found in orbit versus Soho way out at L1. Well, they even got the lunar fleet on there, too. How about that? It's linked for you below, along with all these articles, including the one on the moon, Brief history of the lunar surface from global magma ocean to cold dusted sphere. Lastly on the news front, scientists have discovered that water can penetrate the crust up to 10 kilometers and interact with the mantle material. Well, it should be noted that deep water action and low resistivity is the basis for how we predict most of the earthquakes, except in their world where subducted crust dives hundreds of kilometers deep, no word is mentioned about water that may get out of the cold slab. And a quick word for the rest of you, especially commenters about tectonic plates and subduction and whatever problems you might have with them. I know I have one or two troubles of my own, but not with subduction. Every blot echo hits a cold slab. Every last one. And on top of common sense and detailed data, those battlers out there should pick a different one. We've got the wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. It's 5.25 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.